Hello there, Floss Tube. Hello, Kitchen Stitchers. Welcome to our stitch, our kitchen, stitching kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> uh, this is August. It's August 13th, and we're happy to join you. Um, lots of stuff happened in the last couple weeks. I've got a bunch of finishes and some questions that I forgot to answer last time that I hope to remember to answer this time. And what are you talking about today? I'm going to talk about... Oh. I'm Arlene and this is Chef Dave. Hi. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm going to talk about what to do with some of your leftover fruit. Fruit. Oh, that's good. And I just got my hair cut so it's a little wet. And what? Is that red light supposed to be on? Yeah. Okay. Should be recording. Just, just ask. See, it's telling me up right there that it's recording. Oh, okay. Okay. And he got his hair cut too, so <laughs> we're ready for school to start. So what do you do with leftover fruit, which goes bad really quickly? It goes bad really quick, uh, especially with berries. Berries tend to um, I put love berries. a layer of, of mold on them pretty quickly. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. Um, probably one of the best things that I learned in school was learning how to make reductions. And that includes making reductions with fruit. So if you've got... Um, a pint or two of strawberries in your refrigerator that you forgot about and as long as they don't have any um, mold on them. Um, the same with uh, any other kind of berries. Um, don't throw them away. Uh, if they're large like strawberries, um, cut the greens off, cut them in half and throw them in a pot. Throw them in a, like a saucepan. Um, depending on how much fruit you have in your pot, <clears throat> um, throw, uh, I would say, maybe a tablespoon or two of, uh, of sugar and cover it with water. You can use Splenda too if you, if you want to. You can use Splenda. I wouldn't use Splenda in, until the very end, um, after everything has been reduced down. Um, so <clears throat> you're going to cover this, cover the fruit with uh, with water and turn it on to a low simmer. So when you say cover, fruits in there, you bring the water just over the top of the fruit? Just to the top of the fruit. Okay. <clears throat> I seem to have a small animal stuck in my throat. <laughs> um, so you bring it to a simmer and uh, not make sure it doesn't come to a boil because you don't want it to boil. Um, what you're wanting to do is to draw out the juices in the fruit. Um, the fruit, uh, especially strawberries, are gonna get real soggy and they're gonna look start looking rather anemic, which you know they turn a little um, on the white side. Um, that's good. That's good. That means you're drawing all the juices out of the out of the berries. Um, if you do, if you're using uh, blueberries, um, blueberries will actually pop inside the water. I mean, not like pfft. they'll just kind of open up and they'll release all their all the juice that's inside of blueberry reduction was was I think my favorite. Um, raspberry for me. Raspberry's pretty good too. It's really good on ice cream. Raspberries you don't have to do so much to. Um, you can kind of smoosh them with a with a spoon in the pan to kind of help them open up, but still um, you want them to simmer on a, on low heat to to pull all the juice out of them. How long? Uh, until everything starts looking, like I said, kind of anemic. So um, would you say that's 15 minutes, 10 it's, minutes? It's hard to say. It, it depends on how hot your stove is. What you, what so how long have you typically done it for? Um, well, I did two pints of strawberries once, and it took me like 45 minutes to, to cook them down. But that was a lot of strawberries. We have a, we have a gas stove top which is really awesome we had a when we first were together here in this house we had this nasty glass stove top thing that i kept wishing the stove would die so we could get rid of that thing i tried for several years to break it and i couldn't do it <laughs> but the gas stove top is really awesome because it's it's hot like now yeah, yeah. and then you can down. immediately turn it down so yeah um so once you get everything cooked down um what you have is basically um jam um, you've got you've got what's left of the fruit in there and all and the sugar and the but it's water. not as thick as jam. It it, it will thicken up. Uh, so what you need to do is um, let it let it cool some and then uh, strain it. Pour it through a strainer, and you can take your um, 
a rubber spatula inside your strainer and kind of help push things through because you don't want to so you do you use our yellow colander for that and then like push it through the holes in the bottom of that little yellow handheld one no i have an actual strainer oh okay so it's it's like a, a wire screen strainer um yeah and help push the fruit through it and uh let that cool down and so are you pushing all the fruit through it or are you just trying to get the juices through just it the juice. okay so you leave the the yeah the goopy crap, stuff the scraps scraps yeah, the scraps, scraps, scraps meant to say not scraps the not the sea word scraps. scraps in it yeah yeah you don't want you don't want all this you don't want to keep the solids out of it because that's um for one thing that'll um hasten it uh spoiling it'll help it to, to spoil it it's got a lot of the, the what's left of the fruit in there what you want is a nice clear um kind of thick syrup and uh taste but it's pourable. It really isn't like jam when you have that syrup. It is pourable. Mm -hmm. um, taste it. Make sure you ta always taste everything you cook. Um, taste it. If it needs sugar, add sugar. Um, sometimes what I'll do with, uh, with the fruit reductions is I'll add a little lemon juice to them. And that, help, that helps in two things. That helps them uh, from turning a weird color. And it also puts a little tartness into the... So when it's cooked down into a syrup, it'll still turn a weird color? It can. Hmm. Didn't know that. It's, well, it's just like anything else. It, it can spoil. Hmm. And once you, uh, once you get, get all this done, um, put it in some kind of a container and put it in your refrigerator. How long does it keep in there? It'll keep for quite some time if it's cold. Okay. Week? Uh, two weeks? A couple weeks. Okay. It, it is really, really, really good on ice cream. Yeah, pour it over like really cold, hard ice. Would you cream. put it in like a um, like a fizzy water to add some flavor to it? I have, but it takes a lot. Yeah, it takes a lot of it to make it taste like something. Okay, hmm. interesting. But it looks good and it tastes good and it smells good. We're having beer can chicken tonight. It's it's over there and waiting for us. I don't know if you can see it on the stove, but it it smells really yummy. <laughs> So, I might not spend a lot of time here because I'm hungry. <laughs> it's done. Is it's that really all, is all you had for us? That's all I had for you. Unless there was any questions that I didn't know about. Um, I don't think so. I think, nope, I don't have anything written down. So, yeah, I mean, if you have questions, just put them in the, uh, in the comments. Oh, and the chicken that I cooked, I did all the tricks to it that I said. Last that time. I talked about last time. It smells so good. Butter and herbs and stuff down inside the skin. I don't like chicken skin, like touching it. I'm glad he does that. <laughs> it grosses me out. <laughs> okay. okay. That's all I got. And I wanted to say a shout out to Rebecca Reyes from Mexico. I'm so glad you joined us. It's, it's nice that you're there. Um, last time someone had asked me what I do with my Annie's Keepers. What do I put them in? And I had this out and you know, when I start talking to you, well, my mind just goes what? and I forget. So. I just bought a little container like this from Staples and all of my Annie's Keepers are in here. It's kind of nice because it's got a little gadget top that I can put stuff in. And then Annie's Keepers go in little slides. So they have these little like spiral folder slides, which are really nice. And then you can, you know, just pull them out um, and they click right into these slides. So they're really nice. So it's just a little file, file folder hanger and it fits a standard file folder box. So that works for me, um, and I love it. So that's, that's Annie's Keepers. Um, I also finished my Happy Halloween. I love Jody Rice with Satsuma. I just love the bright colors. So there's my finish. So that's really fun. That was fun to finish up. I did that while I was in airport hell last week. I flew to Boston. I was so excited because I wanted to spend some time in Boston. And we had planned, we had a summit to go up to on Wednesday. So it was uh, first thing in the morning. So we flew in, we planned to fly in the afternoon of uh, the Tuesday and then have like late afternoon and the evening to kind of walk around. And then we were flying out on uh, Thursday. Well, that didn't happen. We got from Cincinnati to Newark. We got off of the plane at Newark and we found out that the flight to Boston had been canceled. And they had us on a like 10 something flight getting in at 11 something, which was miserable. So while we were standing in the mile long line to fix the tickets, 
uh, we were able to get online and get um, uh, a flight at eight o'clock. Uh, and when we got through the line and up to the the, the attendant at the at the front, they only had it was United. United was horrible. They only had two people helping all this all this whole plane of people. Um, when we got up to the front, he had a slightly earlier flight, but even with that, they said our, our luggage was on and then our luggage wasn't and we didn't get it until next day. It was, it was terrible. And then when we got up on Thursday to fly home, we got up, it was 5.30 and we found out our flight had been canceled overnight. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. And so we spent the whole entire day that day in the airport and flew out at, I don't know, it was eight o'clock I think or seven something, didn't get back until 9.30. So I didn't get to see much of Austin. And the second day I had a, a double migraine. I've never had that before. I got a migraine in the morning and a migraine in, in the evening right before dinner. So I was miserable. But anyway, I got to finish that in all that to say I got to finish that in the airport. And so now I'm working on barnwood buttons. So I'm kind of happy about that. I got this um, seraphim fabric for it, which is so pretty. If you've never gotten the seraphim fabric, that's um, that's what it looks like. It's called denim. This one, is, I think, is called denim. And I just love the variegations that she puts in there. She usually puts a little feather in there. She didn't have a feather in this one. Um, seraphim being like an angel, so I'm guessing that's where the, the feather comes from. Um, and But she also puts this little thing, I meant to bring it over here, that has uh, documenting what the fabric was and what, what you used it for. So that was kind of fun. Um, I think my next one is going to be this, and she had a recommendation of Garibaldi Needleworks, um, and so I couldn't find the fabric that they had on, on Garibaldi Needleworks, but I found Approximates. So I think here were the two that I brought. I really like the variegation of those as well. So I think I'm going to use this one. Here are the colors. I'm missing a couple of them, but I think that'll those will show up nicely against that fabric color. So. I like the lighter one with that. So that's what I'm gonna try. And then Christmas is coming. So I've got this to do. I love those little snow globey things and I'm gonna use this picture, this pus fabric, the crystal in it, cause I think that'll be fun behind there. So those are my next projects, but I did get a couple of finishes. Um, let's see, was there something else I wanted to mention to you all? So that's pretty much covered. Um, we are hoping to go with family to Virginia Beach next year, so if any of you know of a good house like that'll have some place in Virginia Beach that's good for three families to rent a house together, that, that you're, any, uh, any recommendations are welcome because we're in the search for that now. So here was finish number one. This was a Satsuma from back in the spring, so it's a little stand-up. And this one I can't wait to put out. This is for the fall. I think this was a, a cricket design. So that was the alternate pumpkin that they had on that one, which was kind of fun to do. And this one was another finished pillow. That's kind of fun. I love that back fabric, the, all the different colors to pull out the colors of the flowers. And then this is the, the cr Christmas gift for a friend of mine. So that turned out really well. So that was pretty exciting. Um, so that's about it. We're about to eat a couple things. This is my brother-in-law's sister, and she's created this book. It's available on Amazon, which has really been a good book. And I have to say that I started reading this before I had my time in airport hell, and her first lesson is A for accept. And the woman that I was with, um, we had a hotel room and it was supposed to have two beds and we ended up in one king size bed and the hotel was full. So I just kept all weekend long going, accept, accept. We just accept this has happened and we just deal with it from here. So that was a really, really good lesson. It's That's an easy to read book and she's very, um, just who she is. When you read this book, you've met her because she just writes the way she talks. And the other thing I, I just want to say is um, I had two, what my pastor called God, calls God incidences or God, in, I don't know, God incidences, not coincidences, but God incidences. Um, the first was when we were at the first round of airport hell. <laughs> we, we were grabbing some dinner in Newark at, at one of the restaurants inside the, the airport. 
and we were sitting next to, I noticed this family sitting next to me. It was a family of four, two kids and a mom, and they clearly um, could not speak English or understand English very well. And I, I noticed that they were speaking French. I do not speak French. I can pick up some words here and there, but even when I tried to say a few words, I clearly was butchering the French. I, I know Spanish better, but I, I don't speak any language like fully, I wish I did. Um, but, except for English. Uh, so anyway, I noticed that they were struggling with the menu, and so I brought up on my phone, I brought up Google Translate. And I, I don't know if you've had much time to play with Google Translate, I think it's a fantastic um, uh, app. And so I brought this up and I typed in, do you need help with the, um, with your menu? And she uh, read it and she said, oh yes. Well, then I was showing her that in here when you're typing, it's got a camera and it also has a conversation piece. So I didn't freak them out with the conversation piece, but I brought up the camera and I showed them that they could just view their menu with their camera and it translated it for them. The mom was so excited. And I have to say that my job is working with technology and helping teachers understand how to integrate technology, teachers and administrators. And when I was at uh, a, a district up until a couple years ago, I was helping students there as well. And that's really my passion. So I was really excited to be able to help somebody with technology and see the, the difference. And they were so sweet. They were very excited. So that was the first kind of God incidence thing. And then after that, um, I the next day, we were we ran to Starbucks for breakfast, basically coffee in the morning, and then I took us around the back way to get to where we were going for this um, voice and education summit. And as I came around the corner, I almost ran over this little boy. I think he was about seven, and he stopped and he looked up at me and he said, um, "Can you help me?" And and so you know you're always like, "Is this a scam or is this something real?" So I stopped and I said, "Well, maybe. What do you need?" And he said. Do you know how to get to Boston General Hospital? Well, of course, I'm from Cincinnati and I don't know this place from any, but I did have my phone. So I brought out Waze, and if you haven't used Waze uh, for directions, it's way better than, than Google Maps. So I brought out Waze and I showed him where we were and where it was, and he was trying to translate to his mom. His mom had two little ones, one in arms with a stroller, and another one probably about two or three. And dad was somewhere up, I think he was trying to get help, but they were speaking Spanish, and I could speak more Spanish. Uh, so I saw that it was about a mile, a little over a mile to get there, and they were just gonna walk. I thought, well, that's just crazy. So I asked him if he knew what Uber was, and he wasn't really sure, so I told him, look, I can get you a taxi. It'll just take a minute and he'll be here. And so I, I brought up my Uber app and I showed him where the car was and where he was gonna be and I was able to get them into the taxi and get them off to the hospital. I couldn't see them with three kids trying to walk over a mile. So, uh, you know, I think there's there are times when, when God puts people and opportunities in your path where you get to be his hands and feet and you know, for me, it's always such a blessing to be able to be that for people. So, um, and I think the more that you are willing to do that, the more God gives you those opportunities. So anyway, I ha ended up having a migraine and that was the highlight of my day, aside from the summit, the summit was great, but um, those, were, those were kind of some fun things. So I would encourage you to look for those God inc incidences, those moments where, he puts you just by happenstance in a place where you can be of help where no one else could. So anyway, I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful week. It was wonderful sharing. And if you have any questions, um, please just put them in the comments. We love to hear from you. Thanks so much.